it's a pleasure to uh, have the opportunity to share with you my passion for decarbonisation and for uh, effective uh, resource utilisation. And um, after many years in international, I, after many years in international business management, I was fortunate enough to be able to uh, deepen my understanding with uh, sustainable development with a year at the uh, University of Surrey. Um, I gained a deeper understanding of how um, sustainable, uh, unsustainable our current economy is. And uh, our fundamental challenge is that however innovative technology uh, may be, once key resources have run out, uh, they can't be recovered. Um, so uh, it's really important that uh, we take into consideration that there really only is one planet and uh, we must be smarter. For the last six years, I've been involved with port uh, industrial areas, facilitating um, fascinating places and vital um, natural economic hubs. They attract uh, intense activity and often heavy industry into a limited space. As important economic drivers <coughs> for their region, um, uh, growth is encouraged, but th there can be uh, environmental pressures. In the Netherlands, it was recognised that intensifying activity in limited space would require innovative approaches. One approach is uh, industrial ecology thinking, seeking ways in which the uh, industrial environment can mimic su successful strategies in nature, where systems are generally circular. So, for example, uh, dead uh, material returns to the soil to give new life. Industrial systems can also be adapted from linear to circular by seeking opportunities to reuse or recycle a wide range of resources through collaborative strategies. Where collaboration is between unrelated businesses, it's known as industrial symbiosis, and in the UK, this activity is supported by the National Industrial Symbiosis Programme. Uh, one example of um, the different ways in which resources may be reutilised is uh, shown in this diagram here, where um, plastics may be either reused, um, simply reused, or there may be uh, other forms of treatment that's required in order for them to be reused. And as one moves um, further towards disposal, um, then uh, more resources and, and energy are needed to recover them. Transformation or game-changing thinking often needs a trigger, and uh, an example is the Dutch film Waste is Food, Apple is Foodle, which was shown on national television in 2006. This started a, a movement of change in the Netherlands. A key feature was the work of Michael Brangart and Bill um, Dono and their cradle-to-cradle -cradle approach, which was first uh, postulated by uh, Walter Starr. The key premise is uh, seeking ways to detoxify and dematerialise products and services to reduce their harmfulness and to enable the resources to be reutilised. This requires a different design approach so that each component may be either a biological nutrient so that it can be returned to the earth or a technical nutrient which can be dismantled and reused at the end of its life. There are a growing number of uh, cradle to cradle businesses and products. Uh, one um, iconic example is Interface Floor, which um, designs and uh, produces carpet tiles which can be uh, recycled. It's an organisation truly embracing sustainability and balancing economic and environmental considerations. And uh, if anybody's interested, I have the book here for them to have a look at. Uh, cradle to cradle approaches are increasingly adopted in, uh, will be increasingly adopted in the future and probably are the future. They drive down resource requirements and costs, they'll safeguard against increasing take back legislation from the European Union and perhaps perhaps consumers will increasingly favour uh, cradle to cradle products. But this will require product and process <coughs> and um, involves fundamental change within an organisation. Industrial ecology approach, 
approaches may also be adopted for beneficial use of individual res uh, residual resource streams. And um, <coughs> I'd like to uh, share with you really the evolution of industrial ecology across a number of uh, Dutch ports. Uh, in, in Rotterdam, uh, collaboration began in the 1990s and was stimulated by joint working between um, uh, Delta Links, the Business Association, and uh, DCMR, um, which was the Environmental Agency of the University and the Port Authority. A number of uh, projects were developed from a review of industrial resource flows. OCAP, or Organic CO2 for Assimilation of Plants, is uh, an example where uh, 160 tonnes of CO2 per hour are delivered from Shell for NIST to horticultural businesses mm. spread across 1,300 hectares mm. through a once disused pipeline and a new distribution network. This is saving annually 95 million cubic metres of natural gas and uh, provides significant uh, competitive advantage to those horticultural businesses. They're looking to see whether or not this network can be extended and it's uh, a very important contributor to the Dutch national footprint uh, because the horticultural businesses um, are, have a significant impact there. The uh, Botlek steam loop is another example. This is now in operation in the Botlek part of the port, linking producers and takers with potential savings of 400,000 tonnes of CO2 per annum. Uh, in Mordaic, uh, businesses joined uh, collaboratively in the 1990s, building on links between Shell Mordaic and neighbouring chemical uh, industries. This began with an environmental uh, monitoring programme with the support from BIM, the Business Association, regional government and others, and uh, was facilitated by the Port Authority. This led to the creation of a multi-stakeholder platform and a joint planning process to identify potential links. A number of businesses are co-cited, uh, co uh, for example AZN, an incineration plant with a centre of co-generation plant and shell, who share steam and then the steam is returned as water. Omya um, produces calcium carbonate from the residual CO2 mm -hmm. from shell and from SMB. And now the first phase of an energy web uh, to be extended across the whole of the port has been uh, in place and a new phase is, is near completion. And importantly, this has attracted new businesses. So there's a new uh, Italian energy company which has come to the site because of the fact that this is in place. The question still remains about how sustainable the organisations themselves are. And the Business Association has uh, now set up uh, a leaders programme with, with their own assessment process to assess the overall sustainability of each, each of the businesses. And those five businesses uh, which uh, have been named as leaders are uh, now acting as ambassadors to create uh, further businesses. In uh, Zeylon Seaports, again, the Port Authority saw value in building upon the connections between different businesses, including Dow, uh, Cargo, Nadalco, and Yara. Um, an opportunity arose to form a joint venture, Wormco, which is providing a pipeline network from Yara to support uh, a new 250 hectare uh, greenhouse development, which is uh, a quarter occupied. The recession has slowed that down a bit, and it includes a training school for lo long term unemployed to be employed within those businesses. However, the question still remains whether or not this is a good use of the farmland which is being replaced. And industrial ecology thinking is now fundamental to the area with uh, Value Park to, to Nursum, which is centred around Dow. So a Dow encourages uh, businesses to be able to benefit from its byproducts. And Bio, Bio Park to, to Nursum, which is promoting bio-based industries, has now extended to become, uh, to be also part of Bio-Based bio Europe, working with the Port of Ghent and um, a training centre and research centre has been developed. Um, so this is really uh, starting to become a cross-border initiative. In uh, the port of Amsterdam, uh, there is an iconic uh, business, the Amsterdam Energy Company, which 
works with its co-located sewage treatment plant and uh, together they're supporting uh, one, the generation of one million megawatts of electricity per annum which powers much of the city's infrastructure including its tram and a metro network. Uh, interestingly, uh, there's a new um, business called Green Mills Biorefinery which uh, co-houses um, many uh, businesses um, making uh, biodiesel and biogas from organic materials and this is a self um, a closed system business uh, so the resources within the business are, are recycled. Uh, there is also a new link to um, the district heating system which also comes from the um, from the energy company, so they're also helping supply energy to the whole estate. Um, we can clearly see here that uh, industrial ecology is an important factor in uh, Dutch port development uh, for <coughs> the individual businesses and the area as a whole, uh, and there have been different approaches. Um, Mordijk is perhaps an example where this is very well embedded. <coughs> and I perhaps haven't had time to explain um, how, how this is as, as well as I could, so if people have questions, do you speak to me afterwards? Um, but uh, really, I was also looking at why um, this sort of behaviour isn't so evident in the UK, and so we examined the drivers, barriers and enablers compared to the Netherlands. Uh, key drivers are much weaker. There's less uh, regulatory pressure to reduce emissions and much less government support. The barriers are much in evidence. Uh, there tends to be much more private governance structures focused on port operations themselves, limited contact with other businesses, mm -hmm. and few, if any, business associations uh, to provide support and help develop relationships and trust, which are so vital. But there are opportunities, but they, these need enabling, and they need the role of champions and facilitators. And uh, interestingly, a gentleman called Hank Krolls, who's been working with Mordike, has noted, he does a lot of work across industrial parks, has noted that where um, subsidies are used to help uh, finance a facilitator, once that subsidy is removed, unless the facilitation has been embedded within the organisations, then they often fail. So that's a, that's a key point um, to note. Uh, Bristol Port Estates and Vicinity Initiative um, we decided to run a demonstration project across the Bristol Port Estate to see if we could put some of our ideas into practice and identified five pilot businesses who were neighbours but had never met before, put them together and many ideas were generated. Um, two examples were the Fire to Plaster Board who in any case within their business recycle uh, gypsum and DS Smith Packaging who recycle, uh, uh, use recycled cardboard to make uh, packaging materials. We uh, agreed to uh, hold a larger event and invite a wider group and we now have a network which is involved with 100 plus businesses participating. They uh, meet regularly, feel more empowered to manage their waste streams more effectively and overall known savings to date are, um, well, to, to 2011 are about £287,000. It's difficult to keep track of it because um, so much has spontaneously happened now between the businesses uh, working together on their own. Um, additional spin-off benefits uh, include exchange in health and safety practices and sustainable transport across the area. So we see on an individual uh, business level, uh, businesses such as Toyota have benefited um, by transforming their waste management and uh, they should achieve zero waste to landfill this year. At the business-to-business -business level, DS Smith has expanded its range of businesses it accepts cardboard from across the area. And interestingly, we have an informal circle um, sharing expertise around LED lighting, which is a major um, move at the moment. And at across the state level, a feasibility study is underway for thermal, um, for thermal heat grid. Research and practice shows that collaboration can deepen over time as relationships mature from quick resource exchanges to wider cooperation as um, the need is identified. For example, a provision of shared waste services. An example of this is the Port of Barcelona, which has been operating a waste collection service for their tenants for several years. 
and has also been very successful in helping improve compliance uh, across those businesses in their waste management. Larger infrastructure projects may develop, such as uh, shared pipelines, where the business case makes sense. Industrial ecology is now very much embedded within Dutch ports and their planning approaches. Uh, but it's not um, just for uh, big industrial areas or big ports. Smaller ports or smaller industrial areas can also benefit. A critical factor is to take the time to know and understand your neighbour, to share information on requirements, resources and the area's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. An example is uh, Foy in Cornwall, where the harbour commissioners were suffering declining trade as the China clay uh, exports decreased and moved to Brazil. Potential, the potential of uh, China clay waste, of which there are millions and millions of tonnes in mountains, uh, was recognised, and the local consortium is now looking at ways of leveraging their local assets and experience to develop a market for sustainable building materials. There is growing uh, interest in developing industrial ecology and industrial symbiosis. Uh, this may gain much greater prominence in the UK through um, the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. So Ellen MacArthur, who uh, many people may know as a sales, uh, saleswoman, uh, yachts, yachtswoman, um, has now um, transformed um, what she does into pursuing the circular economy. And interestingly, the Association of Ports and Cities annual conference uh, in uh, France uh, next month features a whole stream on industrial ecology. Importantly, um, the changes need to be embedded within the organisation. There is a need for a business association um, to provide facilitation and importantly also a multi stakeholder platform uh, involving all of the uh, key stakeholders and constituents which can help remove barriers and transparency between the businesses and organisations is really key. In summary, it seems that substantial benefits can be developed from getting to know the neighbouring neighboring businesses, building trust and facilitating opportunities for local knowledge exchange, which is fundamental to uh, industrial ecology. An evolving community of interest and chances to reduce costs developed around industrial ecology principles can improve the att attractiveness of an industrial area and deliver sustainable development. <coughs> Embedded within master planning, it can really help with an area's holistic development. Uh, clearly, more effective uh, resource utilisation has a positive impact on the environment and on the economy, and the innovation stimulated through cooperation can drive new economic development, and that's been seen in many places. But it may not address the question of whether or not ongoing growth in a particular area is justified, and I leave that as a question. So, uh, thank you very much for your time. And um, I noted uh, here um, uh, three books And one thing I forgot to mention is that in Zeon Seaports there is a um, project ongoing at the moment to explore the feasibility of multi-utility um, pipeline uh, called um, Hidden Connections, which is also a European project. We'll have a leaflet here if anybody's interested in having a look. So thank you for your time.